the housing market has a pretty important bearing on the Australian consumer. Uh, we know in the past that major cycles in housing have led to spillover shifts in consumer spending. Uh, it can also be a source of uh, significant risk uh, for the mortgage sector and how that plays through the financial system. So the housing market's a big cyclical driver of Australia's domestic economy. Uh, and in the past it's been a source of shocks that have sometimes blindsided us. I think particularly this year, uh, where we're anticipating quite an abrupt slowdown in consumer spending, uh, with a housing market in a correction phase and significant price declines rolling through, uh, there's a significant additional risk that that turns out to be an additional drag on growth in 2023. The official opening of the Australian housing markets a, a week or two away, uh, particularly if you're in the auction markets, that's when things really come back online. Uh, and it's been quite an interesting lead in. Uh, you know, we had a pretty big correction last year in terms of prices, uh, giving back much of the gain that we saw during the pandemic uh, and a very weak finish, uh, both prices and turnover into a significant correction into year end. Over the summer break, there've been some sort of hints of improvement. Uh, interestingly, when we look at prices Prices over the course of February to date, they even look to have firmed slightly. And the pre-season for auction markets has also seen some firming in clearance rates. We'd be really careful about uh, interpreting those signals though. Uh, this week really does mark the start of things and uh, through January, February, it's such thin trading conditions that uh, any sort of shift here or there can shift things very easily. And I suspect what happened over January, February is, uh, particularly January, we had no uh, action from the RBA and there maybe have been some uh, hope that we were near the peak in the interest rate tightening cycle and uh, maybe some buyers looking to take advantage of that. Clearly with the RBA raising rates again in February and signaling more rate rises to come, I think the next few weeks we're really gonna find out where we're at with the market. there's almost certainly a standoff at the moment between sellers and buyers. Uh, you know, late last year turnover really fell quite sharply into year end as the full impact of rate rises impacted on buyers and said it was very sour. Sellers look to have backed off out of the market entirely uh, and so the market itself is very thin. Uh, there's not a lot transacting uh, and there's a lot of tension here between buyers and sellers. Sellers obviously don't want to uh, sell at a loss and um, looking for, to achieve the best price possible whereas buyers as we're seeing from our consumer sentiment survey are still very very downbeat on the outlook, including for prices. So we're going to have a bit of a tension for a few months yet. In February, it looks like the tension sort of played out as a bit of stabilisation. But with that RBA rate move in February uh, and follow on moves expected, uh, we would expect, uh, again, buyers to have the upper hand. It does differ a bit market to market. Uh, the Sydney and Melbourne markets also look to be, uh, well, you know, the sellers have backed off. Uh, the buyers have backed off even further. It looks to be a bit of an overhang of on market supply in those two markets. Uh, I think this is a clue to what we're going to see in 2023, which is a real tug of war uh, in the market uh, and prices uh, we think generally moving further lower, but probably in a more uneven way than we saw through the second half of last year. Look, the, the housing market is definitely still hostage to the interest rate outlook. Uh, you know, we expect two more rate rises from the RBA in the first half of this year, and that'll uh, ensure that we still see further price slippage for most of this year. Uh, beyond that, we'll still have a weak economic backdrop playing through the household sector, through labour markets, and that'll be see some further price slippage. And it, clearly that's the risk, uh, is that the inflation challenge uh, turns out to be uh, bigger and more formidable, that central banks have to take interest rates uh, even higher, and that'll have a, a di direct consequence on housing markets. There are other factors at play. At the moment, though, it's that interest rate cycle that's the dominant concern. I think it's another challenging year ahead. I think there's a couple of positives that are in the mix. The first is that the pace of price declines is likely to slow. I think we're near the peak in the interest rate tightening cycle and the big falls in prices that we saw last year are unlikely to see similar going forward. And there's also some glimmers of positives emerging uh, in, uh, around the, the physical supply and demand balance. In particular, uh, we look to have seen a very strong influx of migrants uh, contributing to demand for housing. That may lead to the next upturn cycle forming down, that may draw a line under the market near term and may lead to the next upturn cycle. So we're starting to see maybe you know, where the next cycle is going to head, but we really still have to traverse this interest rate risk and the fallout for the housing market, and particularly in the first half of this year before we can feel more optimistic.